Today's lesson is called A Brief History of Pasta. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm Roger. Today we're talking about the history of pasta, which is、uh, locally known as Italian noodles, which there are of which there is a large variety.、Uh, and we're going to introduce some of the names of the different kinds of noodles that you can have.、Uh, in the past, of course,、uh, the word spaghetti just meant、uh, Italy men in Chinese, but of course, y'all know that there are more kinds of pasta than just spaghetti, but、uh, Yeah, where does pasta come from? How did the world get pasta? Of course, it comes from Italy, but how did they get it? And that's what we're going to discuss in today's program. There you go, a brief history of pasta. What is the story of pasta? Tell us the history of pasta. Tell us where it came from, the origins of it, so on and so forth. And hey, if you want to throw in a fun story now and again, do that too. But hey. Don't do it for too long because this is a brief history of pasta. So we're going to hit some notable moments and important moments, but we can't cover everything. We can't give you the entire history of pasta. That would fill many, many volumes. So no, we can't do an exhaustive history of pasta. We can only do a brief history of pasta because our time is definitely limited. Okay, folks. With that, it is time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. A brief history of pasta: penne, gnocchi, spaghetti, ravioli, tortellini, vermicelli, pasta, in all its many forms, has conquered the world like no other food. Noodles of one sort or another exist in many cultures. Pasta is the Italian version. Although versions might be a better way to say it, because pasta can be found in over 200 shapes and sizes, with its simplest recipes just calling for durum wheat flour and water, pasta got its name from the resulting paste-like dough. Hello, first part we saw the word is conquer. This word is a verb that means to conquer, to conquer. For example, Tara had never conquered her fear of swimming. So she wouldn't dare to go in the ocean. Tara 一直没克服对于游泳的恐惧，所以都不敢下海。又或者说 ，The Roman Empire conquered the entirety of the Mediterranean at the height of its power. 罗马帝国在全盛时期征服了整个地中海地区。再来，我们看到一个单字 version。这个字是名词，指版本。例如 ，in the latest version of this video game, many problems that the earlier one had have been resolved. 在最新版本的游戏中，许多之前有的问题都被解决了。又或者说 ，Jack's version of the story of their breakup is nothing like Jenny's. Jack 说的分手缘由和 Jenny 的版本大相径庭。Okay, everybody. It's time for us to discuss the first part of our lesson. So this is a brief history of pasta. We're not going to talk about everything. We're just going to give you a general introduction to pasta and where it came from. So let's look at the first paragraph here. And my goodness, we're not even speaking English in the first part of our lesson. We're talking in Italian here. So please forgive me if I don't pronounce these in standard Italiano. But、uh, well, here's. Some、uh, kinds of pasta: penne, gnocchi, spaghetti, ravioli, tortellini, vermicelli. Pasta, in all its many forms, has conquered the world like no other food. So, of course, we don't just have spaghetti. I think that's the most common kind of pasta, but there are other kinds, like the ones I just mentioned. There you go. It says here that pasta, in all its many forms, has conquered the world like no other food. By the way, usually you would not say pastas unless you were trying to make it clear that you were talking about many different forms or different types. Of pasta, so we could say pastas include gnocchi, spaghetti, ravioli, tortellini, so on and so forth. But as a whole, you would refer to these things as pasta and not pastas. That's a small note to make here. It is normally pasta is non-count. How much pasta did you eat? Well, I had two bowls of pasta, but again, these are different kinds of pastas, and there are many others in Italy and different regions and things like that. So do your research the next time. You 
want to go to Italy, and we're saying that、uh, all this pasta, in its many forms, has conquered the world like no other food. Yes, indeed. Italian noodles or pasta can be found all over the world, and here we've got the verb to conquer, which means basically you take over a certain place. It's usually used when we talk about armies or dictators taking over a neighboring country. I could say, for example, the Normans conquered England in 1066, and of course they influenced the English language after that. But again, conquered here is not referring to a military invasion; it's just referring Referring to the fact that pasta is all over the world, just like Chinese food is. There you go. It says here that pasta conquered the world. It's everywhere. But you know what? Pasta is not the only type of noodle on planet Earth. Yes, noodles of one sort or another exist in many cultures. Pasta is just the Italian version, although versions might be a better way to say it. Because pasta can be found in over 200 shapes and sizes. So, like I said before, here pasta has conquered the world. But pasta is not the only noodle on planet Earth. It's far from it. In fact, I believe that the people in China here they developed noodles and pasta-like noodles before anyone in Europe ever did. But for some reason or another, the Italians, when they discovered it, they took that pasta and they ran with it. Okay. And they have developed so many different versions. Get this: pasta can be found in over 200 shapes and sizes. So far, we've listed five or six. We could have gone on a lot longer than that, though, because there are 200 or more than 200, I should say, shapes and sizes and kinds and types of pasta. Indeed, Italian pasta is different to Chinese noodles, but they're still similar in a lot of ways. But in any case,、uh, we're talking about the different versions of、uh, these Italian noodles or pasta, and it can be found in over two hundred shapes and sizes. I had no idea so many were available, but that sounds like a lot of fun. Now, moving on to the next sentence here, it says, "With its simplest recipes, just calling for durum." Wheat flour and water pasta got its name from the resulting paste-like dough. So, indeed, if you want to make pasta, the recipe is very simple. It's a very simple recipe with its simplest recipes. It's very basic, easy recipes. All they call for or all they require is durum wheat flour and water. Pretty easy there. Recipe, of course, is a set of instructions on how to prepare. Uh, food, basically a dish or a type of food. So indeed, they just call for these ingredients: durum wheat. I think durum is a special kind of wheat that is extra hard. Yes, there you go. There are many different ways of making pasta, and here we're not talking about boiling water and making an actual dish of pasta that you could eat. There are many different ways that you can actually make those noodles. Okay, and in its simplest form. Pasta is just flour and water. You mix them together, and you make this paste-like dough. It's gooey and gluey, kind of like paste or something like that. And that word kind of sounds like pasta. I don't know what the actual connection is, but yeah, they sound the same, and that's where the word comes from. You make your dough there. It's pasty. Next thing you know, you're making something called pasta. How about that? But that's the simplest recipe for pasta. Mix. Flour and water. There you go. There's your recipe. Those are the ingredients that you need, and also what you do. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't worry. When we come back, we're going to start our brief history of pasta. The idea that Marco Polo introduced noodles to Italy after his journey to China is a myth that sprang from an incorrect translation of a passage in his book. The actual origin of pasta goes much further back in time. According to some historians, it dates back to a civilization that predated that of the Romans. The great Roman orator Cicero later mentioned laganum, wide flat strips of pasta, in the first century BC. Unlike modern pasta, the dough was apparently baked rather than boiled. 第二部分我们看到 myth。
，这个字为名词，指错误的看法、迷思、神话。像是 It's a myth that it takes seven years to digest chewing gum. 消化一个口香糖需要七年的时间，是一个没有根据的说法。而在 myth 的字尾加上 i c a l， 则可以成为它的形容词 mythical， 指神话般的。我们可以说 The athlete is an almost mythical figure in the sports community. 那名运动员在体育界几乎可算是个神话人物。再来，我们看到名词 civilization， 有文明、文明社会之意。举例来说 ，Some historians consider ancient Rome to be one of the greatest civilizations of the distant past. 有些历史学家认为古罗马是最伟大的远古文明之一。接下来我们看到一个单字 orator， 这个字是名词，指演说家、雄辩家。例如 ，Most students thought what the orator gave in the speech was full of inspiration. 大部分的学生认为那位演说家在演讲中的内容充满启发。Okay, so let's go back in time and talk about the history. Of pasta here. The next paragraph says the idea that Marco Polo introduced noodles to Italy after his journey to China is a myth that sprang from an incorrect translation of a passage in his book. You remember Marco Polo, that Italian guy who went to China. And they got to know each other. They became great friends and stuff like that. And lots of people say that yes, when he went to China, the Chinese told him about noodles. So he took that idea back to Italy and introduced it to the Italians. Well, now I guess、uh, people think that that story is a myth. Okay, a myth, of course, is a story that basically isn't true. There's no evidence for that particular story. And、uh, even nowadays, we believe that it totally isn't true. Like、uh, it's a Myth that there's a rabbit living on the moon. There's no such thing. It's impossible for animals to live on the moon with all that radiation. There's no atmosphere there, let alone carrots for a rabbit to eat. So yes, indeed, this story of Marco Polo bringing back the recipe of noodles to Italy from China is a myth. But where did it come from? It sprang from this translation. This is the term "sprang from," which is the past tense of "spring from." Basically, it means it came from there. Yes, to spring from something is to come from this thing or this place. So this myth that we're talking about, it's a result of this incorrect translation. But we'll get to the word translation soon. For now, let's take a look at an example sentence for this phrase to spring from. You could say, many famous stories sprang from the mind of Hans Christian Andersen. Okay, moving on. Yes, let's talk about this word translation. Okay, translation very often is the act or an instance of changing one language into another. Okay, here though, let's be a little bit more careful. Here, a translation is a piece of translation. It's something that has been translated, like a translated text. For instance, you could say she is responsible for this new translation of Homer. Uh, indeed, a translation, or of course,、uh, old books are being translated all the time, and the resulting work of literature is a translation. So、uh, he wrote, I guess, notes in his diary. In his log of his trip to China, he probably wrote in Italian, so they translated it, and it was mistranslated. So everybody thought that、uh, he actually got the recipe for noodles in China, but that's actually a myth. It was a mistranslation, and the actual origin of pasta goes much further back in time. So it's even before Marco Polo's journey to China, and according to some historians, it dates back to a civilization that predates. That of the Romans, so it dates back to this time. It actually goes back to a time during a certain civilization. Speaking of dating stuff, yes, we have this phrase to date back. Two and here, no, we're not talking about a girlfriend and a boyfriend or something going on a date. No, no, no. This phrase to date back to someone or to some time is used to say 
that something has origins or beginnings that go way back in time to an era, a special era that's marked by a person or an event. And here we don't know about this civilization that predated that of the Romans, but we do know that pasta or the history of pasta might stretch back to this very civilization. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at an example sentence here. You could say some Chinese traditions date all the way back to the Han Dynasty. They certainly do. The Han Dynasty, of course, was、uh, many centuries ago, but indeed, pasta dates back to some civilization that existed before Rome did. So yes, pasta is even older than Rome. The great Roman orator Cicero later mentioned laganum. Wide flat strips of pasta in the first century B.C. So this was a Roman orator. That's a person who's good at giving speeches. Basically, hopefully they wrote his speeches down so we can read them because there were no tape recorders back then. But he later mentioned, or he later said this, that there was something called laganum, which I believe is a Latin word. You don't need to memorize that because no one's going to understand you if you use this unless you're talking to experts. But basically, those things were wide flat. Strips of pasta, something like pasta, and they existed in the first century BC. So that would be the century before the year zero, which is what was that when Christ was born, I think, and then after that it's、uh, AD. So BC is before Jesus and.、Uh, A.D. is after. It's more than two thousand years ago. A long that, time ago. That, yeah. yeah, it's it's safe to say that's a very long time ago. Anyways, though, unlike modern pasta, the dough that we're talking about here, the dough was apparently baked rather than boiled. How about that? All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be back with more after this. By the 13th century, the popularity of pasta was clearly on the rise. Culinary books written at the time make mention of lasagna and macaroni, then a term for long noodles. However, handmade pasta was slow and difficult to produce, so pasta dishes were only enjoyed by the wealthy classes. The third part, we see a word called popularity. Popularity is a noun that means popularity, popularity, or popularity. For example, as smartphones grew in popularity, The so-called dumb phones became more and more obsolete. 随着智慧型手机的普及，所谓的智障型手机变得越来越过时。而 popularity 去除字尾的 i t y， 则可以成为它的形容词 popular。我们可以说 ，This part of the city is becoming popular among artists. 城市这一带在艺术家中逐渐受到欢迎。最后，我们看到形容词 culinary 用来指烹饪的。例如 ，the chef created a culinary masterpiece for the upcoming wedding. 主厨为那场即将到来的婚礼创造出一席料理杰作。又或者说 ，Julia showed off her culinary skills by preparing a three-course meal for her friends. Julia 为朋友做了含三道菜式的一餐，展现她的烹饪技巧。Okay, so we're talking about the origins of pasta, a brief history of pasta. So we're going back to a civilization that existed, or predated, Roman civilization, and by the 13th century, which would be the 1200s, the popularity of pasta was clearly on the rise. Popularity, of course, refers to the degree to which something is popular. You could talk about the popularity of a painter, the popularity. Of a certain smartphone app, okay, and that just says how popular, or refers to how popular that thing is. Further, if something is on the rise, this thing is becoming more successful. Let's say it's doing better than it was before. You could also say, though, that if something is on the rise, this thing is increasing. There's more of it than there was before. For instance, crime is on the rise in the city. We must do something about this. But anyways, yes, during this time frame here, the popularity of pasta was on the rise, and it says here culinary books written at the time make mention of lasagna and macaroni. 
than a term for long noodles. How about that? Now, here we have this phrase, to make mention of something. If you make mention of something, you mention that thing, okay? When you mention something, you bring that thing up or you refer to this topic or this thing, but you do so briefly. You don't really go into a whole lot of detail on it. Yep, just simply mentioned lasagna and macaroni, which、uh, meant something different back then. However, handmade pasta was slow and difficult to produce, so pasta dishes were only enjoyed by the wealthy classes or simply rich people. Only rich people could afford to buy pasta because it was so difficult to make; it needed to be made by hand, and the process was slow and probably very expensive. Okay, that brings us to the end of our. Explanation for today. Let's listen to our Chinese teacher now. Good 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第一部分有一个句子，他说 ，Noodles of one sort or another. Exist in many cultures. 什么什么？好，他说各式各样的面条存在于许多文化当中。当我们用名词加上 of one sort or another， 你也可以加上 of one kind or another， 或是 of one type or another， 就可以表达各式各样的什么，各种不同的什么。像课文里面说的 noodles of one sort or another， 就表示各式各样的面条。好，那顺便补充一下。Or another 常常会接在 one 加名词的后面，会形成 one 什么什么 or another， 像是 one way or another， 字面上的意思是这个方法或是另一个，那它其实就是用来表达无论如何。某事一定会发生，或是无论如何一定会设法达成某件事情。例如 ，everyone will be affected one way or another。不管怎么样，每个人都一定会受到影响的。好，那还有一个片语叫做 at one time or another。这个片语表示曾经或是偶尔。那它是用来表达过去某个时候发生的事情，可是没有经常发生。例如 ，We all experience negative emotions at one time or another。意思就是说，我们所有的人偶尔都会有负面的情绪。好，接着读到课文第二部分有一个句子，他说 ，According to some historians。It dates back to a civilization that predated that of the Romans. 有些历史学家追溯至罗马人之前的文明。好，那句子里面有一个动词 predate， 它其实很好记。Date 是日期嘛？那它的字首 P R E 表示在什么什么之前，先于什么什么。所以 predate 就是用来表达存在是早于什么什么的。好，那我们另外要介绍的是片语 date back。date back 它表示追溯或是起源，那它有两种用法。第一种，你就是直接在 date back 后面接一段时间，像 date back two hundred years， 就是说追溯到两百年前。好，那么第二种用法是用 date back to 来加上某个时期或是某个年代，像 date back to medieval times 就是指追溯到中世纪时期。好，那我们就顺便再来学用 trace 来表达追溯的用法。trace 的第一种用法是不及物用法，我们可以用 trace back to 来表达跟 date back to 或是 go back to 一样的意思，表达说始于什么，追溯到什么什么。像 trace back to the tenth century 表示始于十世纪，追溯到十世纪。好，那么第二种用法呢，是把 trace 当做及物动词，它是及物用法。trace something back to 什么什么就表示。是某事物可以追溯到什么，可以回溯到什么？那么 trace something back to， 你后面可以接时间啊，接一个来源或是原因等等。那么你常常用被动语态来表达这个东西，像 something be traced back to 什么什么，就表示某事物可追溯至什么。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Conquer. The king is trying to conquer new land so he can expand his kingdom. Recipe: The restaurant uses an old family recipe to make its famous fried chicken. Dough: Roll the dough into small balls and then place them on a baking tray. Myth: The idea that different parts of your tongue taste different flavors is actually a myth. Translation: The translation of the story turned out to be rather different from the original. 
Civilization. Throughout the course of history, many powerful civilizations have risen and fallen. Popularity. The musician's popularity increased once she started making pop music instead of country. Okay, everyone, with that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you, you next time. time.